It seems like no matter who's in the White House, Obama, Hillary, or Trump, Goldman Sachs turns out to be the winner. Uh, and even Trump, you know, based his whole campaign saying, I'm not, I'm not a Goldman Sachs shill, and, and look what his cabinet is stacked with. Yeah. I mean, how powerful is Wall Street in terms of controlling the political s spectrum? It's very covert, but it's definitely an enormous power because the financial sector is like the, pollu the polluting force that underlies everything. And it's very difficult for people to understand that, that you know, the major corporations have to be in bed with these major banks. And due to financialization, they ultimately bleed over into investment banks. So much money is made by major corporations that people don't even know about it. have nothing to do with goods and services. They have to do with this recycling, financialization, and reinvesting, and this and that. There's a whole subclass of all major corporations that reinvest everything that they've done, and they employ Wall Street to do so. Wall Street, as people have talked about since the American Revolution, the banking system has been given this privilege, I'll say it this way, there's a privilege that, that banks, investment banks, commercial banks, and effectively the financialization has had, and it's been unquestioned, and that's basically the control of money and artifacts that relate to money but have no intrinsic value. Again, that's why I advocate the abolition of Wall Street and the entire thing, these derivatives upon derivatives, and so we create this housing bubble, right? So the housing market, abusing of people uh, that are in need and basically triggering this systemic crisis that these people at the top made a fortune off of, but then contributed to public health outcomes such as 500,000 people that were dying of, that died of cancer because they couldn't get treatment. And that's just the tip of the iceberg of the financial uh, relationship to public health.